So I took the um, I took the main um, the stock switches, or the stock power for the two stock fans, which are both technically 12 volts, and I routed them through a switch. Um, so this yellow wire right here, um, after I had already reassembled this, <laughs> basically thought I was I was not gonna take it off the motherboard again. Uh, I was wrong, so I did, and I had to deal with all the washers again. But the best 12 volt spot, the best constant 12 volt spot on this motherboard is directly underneath this power adapter. Um, Basically, there are three rows. There is a ground row, a 12 volt row, and a 5 volt row, including a constant 5 volt. But so it's in the really big contacts, really spaced out, so they're super easy to um, to solder to. So this yellow wire is soldered to the bottom of the motherboard here. On the, this is the main power connector, and as you see the, the big one in the back you're all familiar with, um, and it is switched power. So that 12 volt line only has power when the Xbox is on. So that's nice, so that you don't have to deal with any of that switching yourself. Some people solder other other places on this board, they'll pick up on tiny little components. I didn't feel comfortable soldering something so small, so I just used a big, big thing on the bottom. Really important, you wanna put hot glue around that solder connection that you put on there, just so it doesn't short out to the chassis, depending on how tall your solder is. Um, hot glue is a great, is a great way to, to electrically seal little ghetto aftermarket solder points that you might have added so uh, so here's what I did the the fans that I added here uh, one is a 40 millimeter fan and one is a 50 millimeter fan I had this one just sitting around I had to buy this one on Amazon for like I don't know five bucks I think the, I think the eight little heat sinks I bought were more expensive than this fan um, so I tested uh, I tested this little fan by just plugging it in to um, I tapped into this power, the stock, the stock controller for these two stock fans, and it didn't really spin. So it's uh, it's a lot smaller of a fan, and it spins at a lot higher RPM. So the uh, the typical voltage that these fans receive from this control or this little connector right here is in the range of five to six volts. It's not it's not a lot. So they spin pretty slow, but they're big so they can get away with it. Something this small at five to six volts, it barely spun. Like it was just doing this. Like it wasn't moving any air whatsoever. Um, I plugged into a nine volt battery, which is about halfway between. It was it was okay. It was better, but it basically was moving so little air that it's like, what's the point? So really, I decided this little fan, which is pretty common for small fans, is only useful at 10 volts or more. So I just decided that this was going to be hardwired uh, to run at 12 volts all the time. It's pretty quiet, so you can't really you can't really hear when it's running. So um, that doesn't really matter. So the uh, the 12 volt line here, this yellow. 12 volt line. Um, I'm sure, if you can see that, but right here I've spliced in a gray wire to that constant 12 volt line I'm pulling from the main power connector, and then that runs over, and, and that's my uh, positive input. This gray wire here into the wait no gray wire into the red here. So uh, this little 40 millimeter fan um, is running at 12 volts all the time, blowing straight down onto the heatsink arm that comes off of there's a better view of it so this is the heatsink arm that comes off the GPU heatsink and just kinda lives over here in space you wanna make sure that if you do screw around with this that you don't bend it down because there's these capacitors underneath it if you can see that gap right there um, I actually noticed that this was was actually bent down and touching those capacitors at one point so you don't want that there, this thing gets hot and those are not supposed to be uh, 100, 100 C plus. So um, this fan is wired in. The 50 millimeter fan, since it's it's bigger and it can run, it can actually move some air at lower voltages. I wired that into these two fans. So those those uh, all share the same output, um, and I'm 
I'm basically ignoring. So there's two outputs on this connector. There's the CPU fan and the GPU fan. They're the same voltage. They just can technically be controlled independently by the by the Xbox itself. But I don't know. I just feel like they they always run the same and they never go to 12 volts. So I just ignored the back one, the brown wire, the GPU, and used the red wire uh, from the front which is for this guy, and the CPU is probably the one that gets hotter, judging by this massive heatsink. Um, so, and even if that's not a good assumption, it doesn't matter. Um, if one gets hot, then they'll probably both be hot if you're playing games. So, um, basically the CPU one is my switched 12 volts, which is really 5 plus. So, that red wire goes to or that red wire is spliced with the in, the positive input for this 50 millimeter fan here. So this fan and these two exhaust fans uh, all run at the same voltage and they are controlled at the same time. So um, now for the tricky part. That would have all been easy if I just decided to to wire those in. This could have just been a 12 volt all the time, um, and then this could have just been switched the same as those but I just don't think that they run fast enough so it's a consumer product people are concerned about noise and uh, you know it's, it's like a, it's a perception thing if you have this computer that runs really really loud all the time then it's bad because people don't understand electronics and they don't realize that loud fans are doing their job <laughs> so um, I decided that I wanted a 12 volt option to override uh, the main fans. So let's call you know the three that are hooked together, this 50 and the two exhausts. Those are the three main fans. Um, so the 12 volt mod, basically this yellow wire that I've already run for this little guy, um, could have been as simple as cutting this connection here, the main switched or controlled a uh, 5 to 12 volt connection and just splicing it into this yellow wire and then bam these two exhaust fans and this 50 millimeter fan uh, would have been running at 12 volts all the time um, but before I did that I tested it I just plugged I tested it with just like a breadboard and plugged the fans in gave it 12 volts and they are loud they sound like a damn quadcopter so um, I just thought of the scenario where I'm running this and it's late at night and I don't know I have headphones on and then somebody's sleeping and they gripe so I wanted the option to not run it at 12 volts and honestly now that I have better thermal contact here plus two fans plus these all these other little heat sinks um, I really feel like that I could just run this at the stocks the stock fan control and it would be fine um, but I do want the option for badass extra cooling like not not warm but like cold mode so um, luckily I built a desktop recently and I had a um, I had a fan control switch a high low fan control switch that came on the back of my PC tower and um, I took it off because my PC fans are all controlled by the motherboard because, I mean, that's just the way that everything works. <laughs> um, they can they control themselves based on temperature. This was just literally like high-low. I think it was 5 volts, 12 volts, which fortunately is exactly what I wanted to do here. So um, I took that thing and I wired it in to, that's actually the, where the yellow wire came from, is it? It was the original wire from this switch, and it was really long, so I just kept it. Um, and I ran that yellow wire all the way, all the way around, wrapped around some capacitors, and around this, uh, around this corner here, underneath. I can't really see what's going on without light in there. So you can see that. So there is a small gap between the motherboard and the fan housing. So uh, squeeze, squeeze through there. And um, so what this what this switch is it's basically don't let the eight wires fool you. This is a this is a really simple switch. So these two black 
are these two blacks, the red and the yellow are the input, and the other two blacks and the two grays are the output. So the two blacks on the input are just ground. They're the same wire. They don't need to be separate wires, and in fact, I join them later down the line. Yellow is the high voltage input, 12 volts in this case, and, and the red is the low voltage input, which is the, um, well, five on a regular PC tower, but in this case, I've actually wired, sorry for the bit of a rat's nest, it doesn't need to look pretty, and this is all neutral space, so it doesn't actually touch anything back here, but um, I have that red low voltage input wired to the actual, um, uh, the original Xbox fan control output from this, from this connector. So it's the, t it's the middle, or it's the uh, middle ground. So it's the one closest to me, which is a red wire coming out of the connector, um, which is for the CPU fan, which is the right one. I've ignored the brown, the brown wire, which is for the GPU fan. And I've wired that red, that red 5 to 12 volts into the red low voltage input to my switch so technically my low voltage is the original xbox fan controller voltage so that could technically go up to 12 i've never seen it do that um, but it is basically a it's not really low voltage it's a uh, xbox control override xbox control override so 12 volt override and if I want to and then I can just let it run at its normal speed and be significantly quiet or significantly more quiet um, here so um, this is just uh, basically I didn't feel like cutting these wires too short so I always have problems with cutting wires too short and then I wish they were longer so I just left them long um, and uh, so what I did is the 12 volts from the, ch from the motherboard comes in here, the two ground wires, these two black ground wires, um, I soldered together. Let's see if we can get the, sorry, just let me get a light on this. I soldered them together and uh, wired them into the middle connector for the middle port on this original connector. So there's a blue and a black wire coming out of there, and uh, I use that ground port for everything. So that that ground port, the middle the middle port of that connector, blue and black wire, um, I use for ground for everything. So the two the two black wires on my uh, input for this switch are grounded to the original fan connector, as are both of these fans. So this blue wire here and this black wire here come around and are also wired into that original ground. So I, I'm still using the same ground, um, which made me feel confident that this wiring wasn't going to do something crazy to the board. Um, and then by cutting the fan wires completely off of that connector, so they're, they're not connected to that connector whatsoever, they're only connected to this switch. So again, this is the 12 volt, this is the original fan ground, this is the original, the red is the original fan control voltage, and then the two outputs are, two blacks are two grounds, and the two grays are the two outputs. So those, those four wires then went to the two fans. So each fan has a pair of wires, so each fan gets a uh, so each fan here gets a gray and a black wire um, which are the same voltage the switch only has one internal circuit it just has the ability to drive two things in two separate locations but in this case they're next to each other so the fans are next to this connector but they are not connected to it the connector is only used to feed the switch and then the switch feeds both of these fans as independent circuits. So the fans are no longer connected to their original connector at all. Um, Alright, so that's what I did. I, I, before I had the second fan, I spent an evening uh, soldering all this together. Spliced every, you want to splice every single thing. Use heat shrink um, so you don't short something out. Um, you really, at this point, this is not super advanced electronics, but there's enough connections 
and the basically had to make a schematic and if I didn't have a nice you know one of these nice magnifying glass light tower things um, it's basically just a helping hands um, it's a helping hands tower with a big light on top of it. If I don't have that and a light, nice soldering iron you need a heat gun you need a hot glue gun you need a you need some heat shrink like just all sorts of different little sizes you need a multimeter like you could you could probably do what I did without without a multimeter and with a pretty crappy um, soldering iron but if at any point you're like I'm not sure what's going on did I wire that correctly and you can't test it then I don't know I just feel like you'd you'd end up putting it all back together and then something would be wrong and you'd have to undo it all and then you'd probably get frustrated and quit so um, all those things are really nice and uh, so are like a nice pair of wire cutters slash I use these for stripping little wires as well you just have to not clip them all the way and just pull um, but uh, other than your basic electronics tools this is just like routing 5 and 12 volts and ground planes it at this point your warranty's so so unbelievably expired on this thing that it's pretty low risk to if you screw something up and it's already red ringed well then you didn't break anything it was already broken so um, so that's what it did the the fans were a little tricky to mount to these big heat sinks I was originally looking at using tiny fasteners like these tiny M2 fasteners that went all the way through it you could kind of you could kind of flex these ribs a little bit so you could get a fastener through there if it was small enough but I couldn't find small fasteners that were long enough so I just ended up tying it on with some wire so this is just some copper wire and it's actually from a really thick um, piece of electrical wire so I just use one piece per corner um, and the reason I only use one piece is because it's touching the heat sink and if it gets really hot I was kind of worried that it would start to melt this plastic depending on how hot it gets so if I had bolted these on with like metal washers I feel like these fans especially because they're sleeve they're sleeve bearings um, they get hot and they just destroy themselves so uh, I put some little nylon spacers which I found at work just these tiny little any, anything to give it an air gap and a not a non-conductive path between the heat sink and the fan so um, that wire that I got this is this is it this is a this is a big strand of it um, so this is from a huge 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 gauge wire that I don't even know what it was for but I just found a piece sitting around Come on. Um, so I looked I cut it open looked inside of it and realized it was these these strands of wire that are individually are uh, they're uh, they're probably about three quarters of a millimeter in diameter so they're they're pretty sturdy that's why I only use one so if it had been if you didn't have some big wire like this you could uh, you could strip some some thin wire and just use just use a piece of that um, you just want to make sure that it's strong enough to hold the fans on for twisting them you have basically have to like twist them until they're snug up so if you use too thin of a wire it'll snap and I actually snap some of those too so any sort of copper wire will or work. It doesn't even have to be copper. It could just be whatever, whatever your normal wire filament is. It's silver stuff. So, um, so yeah. So that's the that's the upgrade. Um, wiring went fairly smoothly. I didn't have to uh, <laughs> splice in any extra lengths of wire by because I made them too short, which almost always happens to me. I managed to route all these wires um, low enough here, so. To take a really quick peek here. Managed to to mount these all low enough that the the fan shroud fan shroud actually. You can see that fan shroud has a small gap actually right there between it and the motherboard. So there's little feet, but there is a natural gap already in there. I, I'm not really sure if that's for airflow to like. It seems like you would want it to be sealed to create better suction, but so as long as you run the wires along the motherboard bottom and not like over tall components, 
it should be able to squeeze out there. So all my wiring was fine. I didn't hot glue anything to the motherboard. I just routed it through like between capacitors. I don't like hot gluing to the actual motherboard face because it's messy. So that's the mod and then I'll show you how it runs.